Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys with a double dip on the road winning two critical Big 8 Conference games. And that team that was picked number six preseason in the Big 8 Conference, number two coach and uh, headed up. Well, we hope we're headed up. We did have two good wins. We beat uh, the University of Colorado in Gallagher, Iba, 77-59. <clears throat> then went uh, last Monday evening to Lincoln and won a real big ball game for us by defeating the Cornhuskers 73-63. And uh, when you look at the standings, and we're going to take a look at those a little bit later, I have never been in a conference where at this stage, uh, from second through, uh, I guess, seventh place, it's so close. Seven wins out of the last nine games, and I can remember the first show that we did after the Jacksonville ball game when the club was turning the ball over. Uh, it seemed like every 30 seconds, uh, the, the, re the turnaround has been remarkable, has it not? Well, it has uh, been, I don't know, remarkable is a good word, but uh, we have made a lot of progress. We have matured as a basketball team. Uh, Reeves has played so much better than we thought he could uh, as a sophomore, leading the league in scoring and rebounding. And I think the biggest uh, probably uh, improvement has been in our backcourt with uh, Brooks Thompson and Randy Rutherford. Not to take anything away from Milt Brown or Fred Burley or Vaughn Bennett or Terry Collins or any of our other players, but the team has matured. I thought the one thing that stood out last uh, Monday evening when we played at Nebraska, and that's not an easy place to play these days. They had a complete sellout. Of course, the game was on national <laughs> television was the poise we displayed down the stretch when they really came after us. So uh, that was encouraging. And now we've got uh, four conference games left. And as I told the squad yesterday, uh, we really believe that uh, we have a chance to, to win any of those games, but we also have a chance to lose them all because there's really not that much difference between the teams we're playing and uh, ourselves. Two, ga two days before the big Monday contest, the Cowboys traveled to Boulder, Colorado. Let's take a look at the Oklahoma State-Colorado game, a game you were concerned about going in because the Buffaloes at that time had not won a conference game, and it's easy to overlook that one. Well, Colorado has a lot better talent than their record would indicate, and uh, they had not won a game in the Big 8. And any time you play someone like that, you're always concerned that your team may not uh, respect them as much as the coaching staff. I don't think our fans respected them that much. But our team went out and I thought played pretty well. We jumped out on them, got up 30 to 23 at halftime, but actually we were up 30 to 17 late in the first half and had a chance to break the game and, and came down the last five possessions and didn't score. Good pass by Brooks Thompson into to Bryant Reeves. Second half, we uh, spurted out and broke the game open, but Colorado came back later and won their first uh, conference game by beating Kansas State in Boulder uh, uh, this week. And, of course, this game in Stillwater. Um, Randy Rutherford, a solid game. You mentioned he's playing better. He has 18 points. Bryant Reeves has 17 in this ballgame, 15 rebounds. And Thompson, to go along with his 16 points, Coach, he had eight steals, and he's picked it up defensively. Well, that's a school record, and uh, that's the one area that uh, we have really been trying to emphasize to Brooks that you've come a long ways as an offensive basketball player. You're making much better judgment, uh, better decisions with the basketball. But you've got to improve defensively, and in this particular game, we felt like it was one of uh, his best defensive efforts. He's uh, becoming one of the best guards, uh, he and Randy, in, in the Big Eight. Uh, they're both good basketball players. They're a great tandem. There are, bit, there are several combinations in the conference, a uh, guard-heavy conference, and the Cowboys have a couple of dandies, and he will be a, uh, perhaps a leading candidate, the leading candidate for newcomer of the year. Well, he would have to be one that uh, should be given a lot of consideration because uh, Brooks and Randy both have, uh, have had good seasons thus far. 30-23 at half, Oklahoma State leading in the second half. Coach, you shoot at 65% and you're going to hang on to leads when you get that type of percentage. Well, one of the big keys in this ball game was our rebounding. We out-rebounded 44-28 <clears throat> uh, and our, our defensive pressure late in the game, of course, uh, broke the ball game open and, and we mentioned Brooks' eight steals. But there's a great defensive play right there. Ran through the pass, took it down. There's one of our young fans. Look at him. He's excited. <laughs> a young, young gun. Oklahoma State wins over Colorado 77-59. And then the next one is the Big Monday game. And we were talking off the air about the Big Monday. Uh, it's great for the exposure, the ESPN national exposure. Scheduling, it, it does some things negatively to you there. Your thoughts, though, on giving up uh, the scheduling for that exposure? 
Well, the Big Eight's very uh, pleased, and I say pleased. I, I would hope that all the coaches feel the same way I do, and I think they, they do. We have the best time slot as far as college basketball. Right. Monday night, people in America are accustomed to watching football in the fall, and so they tune in on Monday, and we follow the Big East game, and we hit the air at 8.30 uh, Central Time, which means uh, on the coast, uh, west coast, it comes on at 6.30, the mountain 7.30, 9.30's not too late in the east, so you probably have a bigger audience at that time than uh, any other time during the week. And uh, the fact that uh, you do have to juggle your schedule, we had to play on Saturday, then turn right around and play on Monday, maybe that's a little bit of a handicap, but the exposure that you receive, the league, uh, the institutions that play in the game, I think that's really important. I think that's one thing that's uh, allowed uh, Big A coaches to have a little bit easier time recruiting nationally. Let's go to Lincoln, Nebraska. Big Monday basketball, Oklahoma State traveling to Nebraska. Two teams playing very good basketball. Well, Nebraska had come off a, a big win over the University of Kansas at their place and then had gone on the road to Manhattan and had beaten the Wildcats. And they did have a lot of momentum and they had their crowd revved up. Uh, Nebraska used to be considered just a football school. It's not that way anymore. Uh, they love their basketball up there and they've been filling the house and uh, their crowd was cranked up. And early in the, the first half, we didn't shoot the ball very well in this ball game, and, and yet we were still down at, at halftime only by seven points. And I talked to the squad and I told them, I said, you know, we just stick to the things that I told you the keys in the game would be. Defensive transition, defensive board play, and taking care of the basketball. And in the second half, we did a lot better job. Uh, first half, they got some easy fast break baskets. Second half, I think they only got one. Uh, defensive board play was much better and we only turned the ball over twice in the last half. So those are the things that allowed us to, to uh, not only pick up the seven points but uh, to win by ten. A little revenge in Lincoln this time. This is the place where the 20 game streak was broken a year ago. This Big guy got in foul trouble and uh, on a, we had two guys step forward though. I thought Vaughn Bennett played his best game since he came to Oklahoma State and Fred Burley who just hit that basket came on in the second half and uh, really hit some key free throws and, uh, and some field goals that allowed us to uh, pull away. And Milt Brown, I can never say enough about that guy. That guy is a warrior. He, he plays hard every night. The big slam. And the Cowboys have played well in Lincoln, Coach, winning uh, four of the last six times Oklahoma State has been in Lincoln. That's a tough place to play. That's what Tom Dorado was telling me, that uh, the Cowboys have played well. And uh, the three years I've been here, we've won twice. And as you mentioned last year, they did break our 20-game winning streak. But uh, they've got, Danny Dean's got a good ball club and a team that I would think uh, has an excellent chance of getting in the NCAA tournament. We talked about this last week, and we're going to talk some Tonight, later, great bench enthusiasm. That's what you want that bench to do. And there's Fred Burley hitting the shot. You never know what's going to happen nationally, but we've got seven teams that probably all rank in the top 50 teams in the country. So whether we'd get seven teams in the NCAA, I don't know, but I would hope we get at least six. Cowboys won it, 73-63 in Lincoln. And Coach, you, you saw the shot there of the bench, of the camaraderie. Team unity is so very important, and sometimes late in the season, players don't get the minutes they want. You, all teams don't have that type of chemistry. That does not seem to be the issue here. Not with this ball club, and not with the two teams that I've had in, uh, since I come to, have come to Oklahoma State. Uh, <clears throat> that's one thing we demand, though. You know, we, we try to tell everybody that each person has a role, and uh, if everybody does their role and accepts their responsibility, then we got a chance to win. Basketball is a team game. It's a, a game made up of individuals knowing what they can do, what they can't do. That's discipline. Blending it all together and uh, making sure that they all understand that if we're going to win, we all have to put our, both feet in the center circle, pull together, and have teamwork. And, and this ball club, that's one reason we've been able to, to uh, get better. I think they all like each other. Uh, none of them are selfish. They don't care who scores, just as long as the bottom line, we win. All right, our role right now is to step aside for a two-minute break. Stay with us. The Eddie Sutton Show continues after this. Our play of the week on Big Monday, a putback. Brooks shoots it. Milt knocks it out of Chandler's hand, and uh, Country's right there to retrieve the basketball and uh, get a putback, and that was a big play in this ball game. We'll take another look at it. There's the shot. You can see Chandler goes up, has the ball, and Milt makes a good hustle play and knocks the ball out of his hands, and the uh, country's right there alertly to pick it up. One of those plays you don't really see come out in the stats. Milt Brown, though, a steadying influence, a player you talked about briefly earlier. 
Milt Brown is a great example of a young man who's dedicated, who uh, has been willing to pay the price and go out and work on his own. There's no one on our basketball team that has worked as hard as Milt has from last season to where we are right now. He comes over there every day, works on his shooting, and the two games last week he was six out of nine from the field. He had 17 points and 11 rebounds, no turnovers. Always has the responsibility of covering one of the toughest people on the other ball club. Uh, he's a Spartan. Now, he's my kind of player. He, he understands his role, and uh, he is one of our two seniors. He understands this is his ball club. This is the last year that he'll be playing college basketball. He'll be getting his business degree uh, in the spring and uh, also is engaged to getting married this summer. But Milt is a young man that uh, has been with us for three years and makes plays that never show up in the, in the scorebook. And yet those are the type of plays like that hustle play right there that allows a team to win. Time for our 30-second break. We'll be back to talk about the NCAA tournament after this. Coach's Corner, this week we will talk about the NCAA tournament. It's uh, right around the corner. Let's address the Oklahoma State Cowboys first. 15-5, and five, two Division II wins. You're at 13 wins, but you've got to feel very good about your position. Right now, a strong number two in the conference. Well, that can change, though, in just a, just a very short period of time with all the teams we have in the league. But I, I feel good about our ball club. If we can remain healthy, and I told our squad yesterday, I said, guys, you got to make sure you eat properly, you make sure you get enough rest. We can't afford any, anyone to get sick on us. we got to do everything that we possibly can do individually. And if we do that, then our team will continue to get better because you're going to work hard on the court. And we got a chance to win uh, a lot of ball games and uh, get ourselves in the NCAA. I don't think anyone right now in the Big Eight, other than Kansas, can say, "Hey, we're in the NCAA tournament." And I, sa I said earlier, uh, the tournament committee has a very difficult uh, task when it gets down to the last four or five teams. When they start picking those at-large ball clubs, and what confuses the issue many times is for a, a conference that has maybe not really high credentials, a conference that maybe the committee plans on just taking the tournament winner, and yet something happens in that postseason tournament, uh, league tournament, and, and somebody else wins, now they're faced, do we take that team that has a 22 and say seven record or, uh, versus somebody uh, in the big eight who might have a, a 16 and 11 record? Right. And uh, so that's a tough choice, but I like our, 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 our place in the standings right now, and we've got uh, Missouri here next week. Uh, then we have to go to Kansas State and play them on Saturday and turn right around and go to Norman and play the University of Oklahoma, and then we finish up the season with Kansas. So all of those are quality teams, and all four of those teams are still in the running for an NCAA bid. And then the fun Big 8 tournament. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll take a break and come back for more of the Eddie Sutton Show after this. All right, let's get caught up with where we are in the Big 8 Conference. There were two, ga two games last night. Coach, you might have expected Iowa State to win at home, 65, only 50 points for Missouri, but the bottom one, a stunner there, Oklahoma winning at Kansas, 80-77. I think that first game would probably was the lowest number of points that Missouri has scored in a long while. In fact, they only had 15 points, and of course that game was at Ames, and, that, and Iowa State is very, very tough to beat up there. But this second game, Oklahoma, I think, was uh, a, a big underdog, playing without Salier. And yet they went into Allen Fieldhouse, and uh, that was a very impressive win by the Sooners. And Evans had a great game, hit some big baskets, and uh, I think surprised almost everybody uh, that uh, they could go in there and beat Kansas. There you see the standings. Kansas still on top at 7-2, and 20-4 and four overall. The Cowboys a game and a half back. Six and four in conference play. Kansas State wobbling a little at five and four, as is Oklahoma. And there you see the rest. And we uh, have played one more game than everyone else, but they'll catch up with us this weekend because we play uh, Louisiana Tech in a non-conference game. Game and a half back, though, have really risen when it looked like Kansas was going to take off and leave the field. Well, you know, we told our squad uh, with uh, Oklahoma beating Kansas last night, uh, it's not out of the. Uh, realm of reality that uh, we could end up tying Kansas if we could win all, all of right. our ball games and if someone would help us along the way by by beating the Jayhawks again and they they have one tough game in my opinion left and that is they have to go to Ames to play Iowa State and it seems like the Cyclones always play the Jayhawks tough but I think we better take care of our own business starting Saturday night with Louisiana Tech 
and then Missouri next Wednesday. And you hear that old saying, plan one at a time, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, and let's take a look at the schedule coming up this week in Big 8 Conference play. La Tech at Oklahoma State, that on Saturday at 7.30. Kansas State at Kansas, Oklahoma travels to Boulder. And then on Sunday, it's Nebraska at Missouri. And on Big Monday, Kansas travels to Iowa State. Tuesday, Kansas State in Norman. And on Wednesday, Missouri at Oklahoma State. That one is a prime game. Colorado at Nebraska and Florida Atlantic at Iowa State. Funny time of year to be seeing teams like that playing Big 8 teams. I don't think uh, traditionally Big 8 teams have played non-conference uh, opponents, but we, because of television and right. the juggling of games, then it leaves some gaps in there, and I think some of us have started to do that. Uh, you've seen the ACC do that for a long, long time, and sometimes it's not a bad idea to play a non-conference game when you have to go up against uh, all of the teams in the Big 8 because this league, and I've said it before, and I've coached in two other conferences, there's no conference <clears throat> like this from top to bottom that I've ever coached in. Much tougher than the Southwest Conference or the SEC. Our last break we have right now. Stay with us. More of the Eddie Sutton Show after this. Welcome back to the program. Coach, sometimes when you see a, a, a team turn it around the way you've turned it around this year, you can look to one specific point. Is there a point, was the Kansas loss on the road up there the point, or has it just been a gradual uh, turnaround for you to where you feel good about yourselves? Well, I think it's been a gradual improvement, but uh, even in defeat in Allen Fieldhouse, we led them for 25 minutes, and uh, I think uh, going out of Allen Fieldhouse, our players knew that uh, if they could play that well on the road against a quality team like Kansas, then they could win, and, and I think that did help when we went into Lincoln and uh, beat the Cornhuskers last Monday evening. Three wins from becoming the 35th Division I-A coach to win 500. That'll be a, a milestone I'm sure that uh, you'll look back on and, and uh, really think a lot of that accomplishment. Do you think about that this time of year? No, I, I'm really thinking about losing at Tech right <laughs> now, but uh, I, I've had some great assistant coaches and wonderful players, and uh, any time a coach uh, wins that many games, you've got to thank a lot of people. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I'm, uh, I've enjoyed uh, uh, every place I've ever coached, Tulsa Central. Uh, College of Southern Idaho, Creighton University, Arkansas, Kentucky. But uh, as I've told all the people here at Oklahoma State, it is really wonderful to be back in Oklahoma and be here at Oklahoma State, my alma mater. We talked about Bryant Reeves last week about perhaps being the Big 8 Conference Player of the Year. All Bryant Big Country Reeves is doing now is leading the conference in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage. <laughs> I don't know, Coach. Looks like it's, he's building a stronger case. Well, he's getting uh, better uh, as the season goes. The only problem is uh, teams are recognizing that and they're starting to double and triple team him. So it's going to be hard for him to maintain those averages. But, uh, guys, I've never had a player improve as much as he has in the short period of time he's been here. He's got a chance to be a great basketball player, and at times he is great right now. Briefly, two big games, you've got to win them. Got to, to win the game uh, against Louisiana Tech, that's for important. Sure. But then uh, I think Missouri uh, next Wednesday is really a key ball game for us because it's a home game. And we only have two, two home games left, and that, the other one's against the, the league leaders, Kansas. And then we know we have to go to Manhattan and K-State's always tough up there and then go back for the Bedlam Series down at Norman. All right, Coach, thanks. Keep it going. Okay, thanks, For Dean. the Coach, I'm Dean Blevins. Thanks for watching this, this week's Eddie Sutton Show.